Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video is part of a springtime what's for dinner collab hosted by Kat at Southern Farming Kitchen. I have a link to Kat's channel as well as to the collab playlist in my description box below. So as soon as you're done watching my video, make sure you head on over to the collab playlist and check out the other videos. I know there will be lots of super yummy springtime dinner inspiration. If you're coming to my channel from the playlist, welcome. Like I said, my name is Megan. I do weekly what's for dinner videos, grocery hauls, and other foodie content. I hope that you'll take a look around my channel and that you'll consider subscribing. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make and delicious, so let's get into this past week's meals. For dinner this first night, I made one of our family's favorites. It's burrito casserole. I believe I've shared this before on my channel, but it's so easy. And like I said, it's one of our favorites. So I preheated the oven to 375 degrees. I sprayed a casserole dish with some cooking spray. I laid down a layer of crescent rolls. And then next, I added a layer of refried beans. I like to open a can of refried beans, add a little bit of water, maybe some salt, pepper, taco seasoning, and stir it, and then lay that over the crescent rolls. Then I added a layer of taco meat. You could do, um, of course, ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever you'd like. After the layer of taco meat, I added some shredded cheese and then placed this into the oven and baked it for about 20 to 25 minutes. You just want to cook it until the crescent rolls are all the way done and that's it. To serve this up, just add your family's favorite taco toppings. For the burrito casserole, I like to add a little bit of sour cream, some chopped green onions, and some taco sauce. And then on the side, I just made some little quick side salads with some lettuce, tomato, and my husband's had some avocado. And that was our dinner this night. Like I said, so easy, but this is a tasty little casserole. I recommend you all give this a try. The next night, I really didn't feel like cooking, and my husband saw a commercial for KFC's chicken tenders. We haven't had KFC in forever, and he was like, oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. Can we please get that? So that's what we did. I got, I think, their three-piece chicken tender meal with macaroni and cheese. My husband got their, I believe, five-piece uh, chicken tender meal with coleslaw and fries. And then if you ordered through the app, there was some kind of deal where you got a free chicken sandwich. So we um, just did that. My husband ate it for lunch the next day. Here's a picture of my plate. So I just have the biscuit, the chicken tenders, and the macaroni and cheese. Um, they forgot to give us any sauces at all. So I just whipped up a quick um, homemade honey mustard dressing. I've shared this many, many times before my channel. It's just mayonnaise, mustard, and honey. That was our dinner this night. This was so good. I love having fried chicken, especially in the spring springtime for whatever reason I just feel like fried chicken and the springtime go together I remember having fried chicken like at church get-togethers or after church on Sunday or for picnics so this was really yummy and it totally hit the spot for dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for chicken piccata and artichokes. I'll, of course, have the recipe linked in my description box below. I was really excited to try this recipe for really three reasons. One, I've never had chicken piccata, let alone made it. Two, keeping with the kind of springtime what's for dinner theme this week, I was excited to try it. Artichokes are in season during the springtime. You've got your citrus fruit, so lemon. And just really, you know, when, when we move towards the springtime, we start moving towards more lighter dishes coming out of the winter and fall where we tend to eat a lot of more comfort food. And third, I had a jar of capers in my pantry that I really needed to use up. And I had about a half a jar of marinated artichokes in my fridge that I needed to do something with. So this recipe was perfect. And like I said, I'd never had this before, let alone made it. This was delicious. It was so, so good. I recommend you all give this a try. Let me show you how I made it. For one of my sides, I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes. I just took some russet potatoes, washed them really well, peeled them, cut them into cubes, placed them in some water and boiled them until they were tender. I'm gonna drain those and then I'll mash those up. Now for the chicken, I'm going to add some olive oil to my skillet, turn this on about medium high heat. Once it's up to temperature, in this dish here, I have a little bit of flour with some salt and pepper. I've dredged my chicken cutlets into the flour. I'm going to add them to my hot skillet and then cook them uh, for about maybe three to five minutes on each side. And then once they are cooked all the way through, I'm going to remove them to a dish and set that aside. Now don't wipe out that pan, there's yummy flavor in it. And a quick note, you might have to cook your chicken in batches depending on how much chicken you have. 
To that skillet, I'm adding my butter, a little bit more olive oil. I'm going to add in some minced garlic and then my artichoke hearts. And I'm going to cook this until the garlic uh, is soft and fragrant for about 30 seconds to a minute. I'm stirring that to release the brown bits from the bottom of the skillet. Next, I'm going to add in the white wine. Now, you can, of course, use whatever white wine you prefer. I have some of this alcohol-free Chardonnay on hand. I mentioned before, we're just not personally alcohol drinkers, but I did have this on hand. We had bought some non-alcoholic drinks back around Christmas time. If you don't want to use white wine or you don't have it, you could just use extra chicken broth. So once I've added the wine, I am going to bring this to a simmer and cook it until it's reduced by half, about two to three minutes. Next, I'm going to add in the chicken broth, or in my case, I'm using water with some of this chicken bouillon. I'm going to add in the fresh lemon juice and the capers. I'm going to give this a stir, reduce the heat to medium, bring it to a gentle simmer, and cook it for just about a minute. Next, I'm going to stir in the butter and then cook this, stirring it every once in a while until the sauce begins to thicken. It'll take about three to five minutes. Once that's done, I'm going to add in my parsley. I didn't have any fresh parsley on hand, so I'm just using parsley flakes. And then you'll want to give your sauce a taste and adjust the seasoning. Once it's where you want it, you're going to add the chicken back to your pan and kind of toss it so that the sauce coats the pieces. And then you'll cook this for just a couple minutes. You're really just warming the chicken back up at this point. All right, here is what it looked like when it was done. To go along with this, I took a zucchini, just cut it into half moons, Seasoned it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I cooked it in the air fryer at, I believe it was 400 degrees for about seven to nine minutes just until it was tender. And then to finish up the mashed potatoes, like I said, I drained them, mashed them, and then I added a little bit of butter, some milk, salt, and pepper, just kept them simple. And I'll show you our plates next. Here are the plates. So we have some of the mashed potatoes, zucchini, the chicken piccata with artichokes. And then to garnish it, added just a little slice of lemon. This was so good. It was light. It was refreshing. It was delicious. I'll definitely make this again. When I think about springtime meals, I always think about lamb. We love lamb, but we don't have it very often at all. Really, we only have it once a year around Easter because lamb can be really expensive. But luckily around Easter, it normally goes on sale. So I always watch the weekly ads and sale prices and try to get it, like I said, when it's on sale. So this week, Aldi had it. I grabbed one of the leg of lamb roasts. Let me show you how I made this. I removed this from the wrapper. Now mine had a net on it. If yours doesn't, you may want to secure it with some kitchen twine. And I forgot to mention this, but this is a boneless leg of lamb roast. I rubbed this with some olive oil. I seasoned it pretty generously with some salt, pepper, dried rosemary, dried thyme. And then I took a little paring knife. I cut some slits in the roast and I added in some garlic slivers. Then this is going to go into the preheated oven. I baked mine for about an hour. How long you bake your roast, it really depends on how big your roast is. And also it depends on how you like your lamb cooked. We like ours more medium rare. Um, but of course, if you like yours medium well or even well done, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'll include a link to a recipe that I kind of took inspiration from in the description box below. It has the temperatures and approximate cooking times um, listed in that. So I'll put that down in the description box. For the sides tonight, a few weeks ago, I was at Aldi and I saw this four cheese risotto mix. I didn't have a use for it at the time, but it looked delicious, so I grabbed it. I thought it would go perfectly with the lamb tonight, so I'm gonna make that. And then I have a few fresh carrots on hand. I really need to use those up before they go bad, so I'm going to make some honeyed carrots. I'm going to cook the carrots up and then add some butter, honey, and brown sugar. That risotto mix was easy and it was tasty. Basically, all I did was add the mix and some cold water to a pot, brought it to a boil, simmered it for about 15 to 20 minutes until the rice was tender, and then added in a little bit of butter, some Parmesan cheese, and I decided to add in some frozen peas. Peas during the springtime are in peak season. They're so, so yummy. All right, for the carrots, I really should have peeled these, but I was feeling lazy this night, so I just cut them into little coins. I covered them in water, boiled them until they were tender. Once they were tender, I added in the butter, honey, and brown sugar and cooked them for just a couple more minutes. 
Here's the finished lamb roast. I allowed this to rest for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to remove the netting and slice it up. Here's the finished risotto and then we have our carrots. We've got our sliced lamb. And to go along with this, I like to serve some mint jelly. I just get this at the regular grocery store. And next I'll show you our plates. Here's everything served up. I cannot even begin to explain how delicious this meal was. So, so good. That risotto mix was delicious. I definitely get that again. Those carrots are so good and sweet. And then we have the lamb with the mint jelly. Oh, so good. For dinner the next night, I made slow cooker barbecue ribs. In my last Good Chop haul, I ordered these St. Louis style ribs. So I decided to cook those up. All I'm going to do is remove the ribs from the packaging and then I patted them dry with some paper towels. Next, I'm going to add some seasoning to the ribs. Use whatever seasonings you'd like. I have a little bit of this homemade barbecue rub on hand. I've shared this before on my channel. This is so easy. You probably already have everything in your pantry. I'll link that in the description box below. I also had some of this Kinder's barbecue seasoning on hand, so I decided to use that as well. I'm just going to rub all sides of the meat really well with those seasonings. I'm going to place them into my slow cooker. And then I added a few drops of liquid smoke and I'm using this sweet and spicy Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. This is what I had on hand, and we hadn't tried it before, but it was good. It did have a little kick to it, but it was delicious. We loved it. All right, so once I've added the barbecue sauce, I'm going to spread that around on the ribs a little bit, cover it with a lid, and then I cook this on low for about seven to eight hours. For one of my sides, I'm making a cracked out pea salad. This is from the plain chicken. I'll have the recipe in the description box. In this bowl, I've got some ranch dressing. You can, of course, use bottled. I didn't have any on hand, so I just whipped up some semi-homemade. To that, I'm adding in my mayonnaise. Next, I'm going to add in the peas. These are just frozen peas that I uh, slightly defrosted. I'm going to add in some shredded cheese, cooked crumbled bacon, and some chopped green onions, and I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. Next, I'm going to add in my pasta. This is elbow macaroni that I cooked in some salted water. Cooked it until it was tender, drained it really well, and ran some cold water over it. I'm going to stir that until it's combined and then place this into the refrigerator, covered of course, and allow it to sit until we're ready for dinner. Here are the ribs after about eight hours. About halfway through the cooking process, I did rotate the ribs. So the ribs that were on the bottom of the slow cooker, I moved on top. The ones that were on top, I moved to the bottom. I hope that makes sense. I placed the ribs onto a foil lined baking sheet. I'm going to brush both sides with some barbecue sauce. And then I just pop this under the broiler for a couple minutes. I had some fresh fruit on hand that I needed to use up, so I decided to do a quick fruit salad. I love doing fruit salads in the springtime. Again, I'm using what I have on hand. Use what you've got on hand or what you and your family like. Here I've got some strawberries, kiwi, fresh pineapple, some grapes, and then I had a can of mandarin oranges and juice. I just drained that, and then I'm going to stir everything until it's combined really well. Here are those ribs out of the broiler, and then we've got the pea salad along with our fruit salad. Next, I'll show you our plates. This was so incredibly delicious. Those ribs were so flavorful and tender. That pea salad was yummy. I mean, you can't go wrong with ranch and bacon and cheese and carbs, right? <laughs> and then the fruit salad, so good. The fruit was perfectly sweet and ripe. So, so yummy. For the last dinner in this week's video, I made roast beef paninis. I love doing sandwiches in the springtime. They're so quick and easy. And also, at least here in the South where I live, I prefer eating outside during the springtime, like doing picnics or even just going and eating on the porch or the patio before the awful mosquitoes and humidity come with the summertime. <laughs> so, and plus I had a couple things on hand that I needed to use up. So these were perfect. One of those things were these ciabatta rolls. They were gonna go bad on me. Um, so I just split those. I'm adding a layer of mayonnaise and then I needed to use up this roast beef. So I'm going to add a layer of the roast beef. Now this next ingredient you totally don't have to add, but I was in like a little gourmet food shop the other day and I saw these balsamic caramelized onions and they just sounded amazing. So I'm going to add those. You could of course make your own or skip it all together. And I've also got a few slices of this provolone cheese that need to be used. So I'm going to add that. 
Cover that with the top of the roll and then I'm going to spread the tops with a little bit of butter. For my husband's sandwich, I added some of this cream style horseradish to his. And to cook these up, I just used my Cuisinart Griddler. I've talked about this thing many times before. I have it linked down below. It's amazing. You can do so many different things with it. So I just cooked those until they were toasted and the cheese was melted. Here's the plate. So we've got the panini and then I just did a side salad with this. I've mentioned this many times before. I've recently fallen in love with this. This is just a spring mix with some cranberries, some honey roasted nuts, honey goat cheese, and a balsamic vinaigrette. This was such an easy dinner and it was delicious. So, so good. All right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video and it gave you some dinner inspiration. If you did like it, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And don't forget to check out the Springtime What's for Dinner video collab. Again, I'll have that linked in my description box below. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.